Let me get to what Pete Rock said about Heavy D. <laughs> this is going to be a great show. All right, so Pete Rock speaking about the fact that Heavy D ain't been getting his prop in Hip Hop 50. What's that, Coop? Zuri, put your super chat in, too, so we yeah, can read yeah, it, yeah. too. We got to get Zuri. I think I missed that. Because what happened, man, I was going through the chat, and then it just it just limited the actual chats, and I didn't get a chance to get back up to theirs. But we got you. Because I respect absolutely none of this talk about 50 years of hip-hop that doesn't include Heavy D and the boys. Um, he kicked down the door and paved the way for a lot of motherfuckers. I think his smoothness and humbleness makes people forget his impact and relevance in the, bi- in the music business. I need everyone who agrees, especially everybody uh, for Money Earning Mount Vernon, to repost and share so we can get have a proper televised tribute for his achievements and contributions to the game. Heavy D, R.I.P. Dwight Myers. Why do you think that Heavy D constantly gets overlooked? And I think even in our show the other day when we talked about underrated, underappreciated MCs, we didn't initially mention him until, you know, someone in the chat did. Uh, Fair. I mean, once again, uh, I think there's some truth to what Pete Rock is saying. We're not part of this discussion because we actually have talked about Heavy D you know well, yeah, yeah. we're a platform with the people so right we talk about heavy d more than any other platform that i know of like randomly like yeah. we have random heavy d talks like the whole heavy d cane being comparable dancer to hammer talk the other day yeah, i remember that yeah 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 that that was before this got posted so we've been giving heavy his props this year and we've always spoken complimentary of him um there's something about the street ethos of hip-hop mike and although he's from you know earning mount vernon he never really tried to fit into that mold. Like it was a yeah. conscious effort by Hev to make different records. Yeah. And even when you see the Peaceful Journey album and he stops cursing, the Don't Curse record, like, you know, he's you got Kane and G rap on there not cursing. So he's still a hip hop dude. And maybe it's not given um enough due because one, he came up in an era with some very top, top, top notch lyricists when lyrics really, really matter. I think he was making better radio records than them, though. And he was. Yeah. And I think he's been lauded and applauded for that because I think what Pete Rock is forgetting is, is that, well, Hev, because he made those radio hit records, bossed up into music positions in the music business more than his contemporaries did. Like they KRS. Were Hollywood, too. Yes. Like KRS-One and Rock and Kane when becoming the head of no label or getting his own subsidiary label to start. Yeah. And so. Shout out Soul For Real. Right. And Monifa. Yeah. Right. And he had a good ear, like putting AZ on the I Miss You remix, Hev is ahead. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a lot to do with Puff's origins, a lot to do with Big's origins because of that. He put Puff on. The, he introduced Puff to uh, Andre, Andre Harrell, Harrell, for what I know. Correct. I've been told the same thing. Yeah. And so he is super important. And this is Pete Rock's cousin, big mm-hmm. cousin, too. This is big cousin, too. So mm-hmm. probably how I feel about Six is probably how he feels about Hev, and he's probably taking it personally. As he should. He has a right to, actually, this mm-hmm. time. I know a lot of the time lately it seems like he's been um, saying things, that, and we question the veracity and the place that it's coming from. But this is one of those things where I think he's right, and Heavy does deserve more love for his contributions to hip-hop as hip-hop turns 50. And I'll also say this to say, it's like, well, <clears throat> typically when you have these sort of issues, you need to clean up your yard. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to hear nobody from New York really talking about Andre the way we talk about Andre. They ain't from here. Yeah. So if Pete Rock's not happy with the coverage that Heavy D is getting or not getting, maybe he need to be addressing these motherfuckers he's had relationships with in New York the last 30 years. Huh. How LP. about how about that? How about you do that for Big Cuz? Because if because if Six got an issue out here, you're gonna see me. Fuck yeah. all that talking shit. <laughs> LP with the super chat says Big got a lot of his style from Heavy D. Um, okay. This and Big two, has said that too. Yeah. I mean, it's Puff. You know what I'm saying? Like it's Puff obvious. carried over. Puff carried over Uptown the Bad Boy. Like I think that to a certain degree, and I know people might kill me in the chat because everybody's on the Big stuff, and rightfully so. He's great, but I think that Puff saw how Heavy was able to work over Uptown. His answer to Heavy on his own label was big. He wasn't able to take Mary with him. Here's Faith Evans. Mm -hmm. Can't take Joe to see with me. Let me get 112. Mm -hmm. 
So that, I mean, it is what it is. And have is the blueprint for big from an image standpoint. Even giving, um, even giving Puff the confidence to know that a big guy like that could even work and you can make him suave. Maybe Big would have ended up dancing at some point too. Who knows? But yeah, the, that uh, way go. <laughs> the hypnotized video. You never know. Had he not been in the cane? Remember the little dance move? Yeah. I could I could see Big doing. A I mean, bop. he might have been dancing in the More Money, More Problems video. You know what I'm saying? Who knows? Mace ended up picking it up. Say, so, hey, um, what dancing I was dancing in the video. <laughs> exactly. But what I was gonna say though, there's two things here um, with the heavy thing. Well, I do want to say that Heavy actually is the only MC I think that actually had a verse on a Michael Jackson song, single in Jam, and a verse on a uh, Janet Jackson single with All Right. Yeah, he's on there. Yeah, he's on there. That shows you how big this dude was. Heavy is important. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, like take that up. Like, how about this? When we talk about Big Boy not getting played on the radio, we don't sit up there and be like, man, Big Boy ain't getting no love in New York. We be like, what the fuck is wrong with these niggas in Atlanta not playing Big Boy? So what Pete Rock really need to stop doing is generalizing the statement and direct it at the people that it's really meant for. And well, that's, and I want to talk about New York. And that's his own tribe. This is your own tribe's failure, nobody else's, because Heavy may not get that everywhere, but he definitely should be getting that up top right now. Well, I want to talk about New York. I think that people who are from Mount Vernon and people who are from Staten Island and even Long Island yep. get treated like second-class citizens. This is from— Unless you're Rock him. This is from an outside, uh, out-of-towner, right? You know what I mean? That's how, what it appears to be, right? What we're seeing from Atlanta and looking at New York, it feels like the people that are in Long Island— like you said, with the exception of Rakim. But you know what? Sometimes not even with the exception of Rakim because I see people uh, getting on radio stations. They ask them they top New York rappers. Rakim's name don't be coming up. And I feel like, you know, sometimes people in Long Island, Staten Island, and people up in Mount Vernon and even Yonkers get treated like second-class citizens in New York. And I think that Hev is catching a little bit of this as well. We always talk about how the source didn't rate any Wu-Tang effort a five mic. That's crazy. Crazy. They refuse to rate Wu Tang forever. It's a travesty of the highest order. Yeah. So they can't tell me that type of stuff doesn't happen. If you're not from Brooklyn, the Bronx, Queens or Queens Harlem. Queens or Harlem, you don't count. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what it looks like. And I think that Hev has kind of uh, become a part of that as well. And so I think that's a part of it. And I also think the fact that. He was a positive MC. They four mic the shit out of Wu Tang. Mm -hmm. Think about this: Takal and Liquid Swords have the same mic rating according to the source. Mm -hmm. Who in the hell thinks that? Thirty six chambers, four and a half. Purple tape, four and a half. Yeah. What was Iron Man four? Four. Told you they four them. Return to the thirty six chambers, four. <laughs> it just kept four. Wu Tang forever. Oh, yeah, we're not gonna. Rate we're not gonna that. do that. We're not gonna do that because we've been pissing on them for too long. We can't piss again. Yeah. Look, maybe look. they ran out of material. We'll wait till they right. run out of material. Hold on. What they were hoping was was that Wu Tang Forever was going to be better than all of those projects, and they could give it five and get their credibility back. And then Wu Tang Forever wasn't that, and credibility was shot. And then they gave Supreme Clientele four and a half. They just hid like some bitches. Though, Mike. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, like there's no other way of putting that. Like, they didn't rate Wu Tang Forever. Yeah. It's like the biggest sucker move I've ever seen a rap publication do. It's literally, it's, it's literally them being shook and saying, no, we're too shook to even rate this album. And the balls of Hot 9-7 to even ban a group that is that important to New York City and to hip-hop in general, like Wu-Tang. Like, to even have the balls to do that, that's some, that's some Staten yeah. Island well, I'm bias. about to say, well, you know, they got to catch the ferry to get here, so exactly, fuck that. Exactly, exactly. Right. Uh, Esquire with the Super Chat says, I'm trying to reconcile in, uh, inconsistencies. I'm sorry, I'm trying to reconcile the inconsistencies in the criteria. For example, Snoop has very few pro-black pro records, but he's above common on your list. Do we really have to break down all the things that Snoop does better than common, though? I mean, do do we really got to do that? Do you think, Esquire, that Common stands a chance in a versus with Snoop? <laughs> do you really think that? You know what I'm saying? Like, 
hopefully you don't think that the 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 uh the difference between cube and big oh, <laughs> is the same as the difference between snoop and common I, come on man. dude come on I'm, esquire I'm, you're reaching now you're reaching now esquire we love you we appreciate the the super chats keep them coming man but you're reaching on that one common yeah. and snoop yeah, is that where we're at i want to read that again Jay Short with the Super Chat says, uh, tell any of my aunties Heavy D is in the top 10. Uh, they'll, <laughs> they'll make you a to-go play. I feel that, my nigga. Zuri with the Super Chat showing love, $20 Super Chat. He says, I said, while y'all may not like Hit em Up, most people will say that it's a top diss. It's mostly pop. Samples the song of, samples the song of the folks that he's dissing, direct, memorable, and quotable. Uh, plus, song still gets radio club play and outside play. It's yeah, I not mean, good. I'm not totally where Coop is. It's with, not a with, good song. I'm sorry. I'm, I tired, think, I'm tired of giving it a hall pass. The record not good. Why don't you? I think you don't because like the tone Because he has like 30 or 40 songs better. That's why the record not good. Because you, liter- you can literally go through almost every album that this man ever made, with the exception of the first one, and not just find a song or two better. But, like, most of the albums, like, half the damn album is better than this song. Like, where would this song go against the songs on Me Against the World? They're, every song on Me Against the World is better than this record. Every song on All Eyes on Me, book one, is better than this record. Half of All Eyes on Me, book two, is better than this record. About 80% of Machiavelli is better than this record. Are you serious? This record is not <laughs> like that. And this is what I mean. This ain't about nothing about the tone. I love uh-huh. Bomb First. Bomb First is the shit. Uh-huh. That's a great record. Okay. Hit 'em up ain't a great record. What disc records would you put ahead of Hit 'em up? Mike, we can go on for days and days. The bitch in you, drop mm-hmm. a gem on them. The uh, the kiss the game goodbye freestyle that Beans did. Back to back, Ether take over. No Vaseline. The bridge is over. Ten percent diss. Wow. Shit, pimp slapped by Snoop Dogg on Suge is better than Hit 'em up. You just don't like Hit 'em up at all. It's not a good song. Stop <laughs> acting like that song is good. My gripes for Hit 'em up. Is the fact that Pac didn't take on the song himself. That's my biggest gripe with it. The beat's cool. Think about it. He took Big's hook. Yeah. Everything's somewhat recycled in that song. What right? about that speaks to Pac? Yeah. Where? How? Hmm. Niggas love some bullshit, I swear. I don't think it's a top five. I'm you know, all things considered, I'd say it's a top 15. Like, like, I don't think it's the, better the, than Checkmate. The Tupac diss, Drop a Gem on him, is better than Hit Him Up. That's a real diss record with a real beat Do people a real think, hook. Do people think that Hit Him Up is better than Checkmate from Jada? When Jada was going at 50. No, I, I don't. Th- I, it can't be. Can't be. The nigga went crazy Hell. on there. Yeah, I mean, are you saying that Where? The, you th- saying the Outlaws bar work was better than Jada? That's what I'm saying. It's like you understand that part of what makes the battles great is the stuff that the MC say that dilapidate and dehabilitate the other MC. You really wasn't saying nothing on that record like that. First Mike. off, fuck your bitch and the click you claim. What's up? Right, come and click we claim. Game. Game. You came to be you a player, but fuck, fuck your wife. wife. Bust some bad boy niggas fuck for life. life. Uh, the weak hearts are ripped. Uh, Junior Mafia uh, and some punk ass bitch. Like, <laughs> like yeah. And then it's pretty much over at that point. Like no no more pain. <laughs> no no more pain's a more viable disc record than that, Mike. You know what I'm saying? Like you could call that a disc. I think what people love about Hit 'em Up is how direct it is. I think the rant really does a lot for the song too at the end. I know when I was a kid, when we used to tape it off of uh, the radio, I remember like being entertained by the radio trying to block out all the shit he was saying at the end. But yeah, I mean, no disrespect to the outlaws, but in a disc record. I'd rather just hear the good. artist. The song not good, Mike. I'm Peter sorry. Parks with the Super Chat says, as a New Yorker, I agree with Mike. We always throw Staten Island, Mount Vernon under the bus. It's definitely biased. I agree. And I think that's what Hev's getting. Hev's getting a lot of that. And I also feel like Hev being a positive MC. I think that I the, think it's the positivity I more than it the, is even the Mount Vernon thing. If when you, you think about it, man, when you think about it, not to cut you off, but the people who had to get pushed, I don't want to say had to get pushed, but had success in Hollywood from the rap game, there were positive MCs like Will Smith, right? Queen Latifah, right? Even Ice Cube to a degree, LL Cool J. Mm -hmm. And Heavy D was right along with that. And I think that being positive enough for television in the early 90s, 
was the total opposite of being marketable in rap music. You know what I mean? And I think that the positivity of Hev and the fact that he was not problematic, he, were, he wasn't cursing, he wasn't, you know, invoking violence or anything like that, they pushed him to the back of the line like it never happened. I mean, it, it's kind of funny. I think, you know, he kind of transitioned too. That's what I mean mm -hmm. is, is that, well – he did kind of get into the whole like Hev didn't make a whole whole bunch of material either. Mm -hmm. Like what Hev got three albums? If he got three albums, uh, right? Heavy D and the Boys got three. I think he started doing solo stuff. Probably had two after that or something like that. Because you know stuff like um, you can be my man, like Black Coffee and all that stuff. That was Heavy I like D solo. Coffee. Yeah, I love that record too. Love Smith. <laughs> Look up his catalog real quick. Godfather with the twenty dollars super chat showing love. He says, "Yo, uh, can you ask one more thing? Can we stop saying this question? Why did everyone uh, downplay Nas, but he battles uh, the best with the best of the best, and he's still standing? And can we stop saying that he signed the J? Him and J, it was a partnership. We're gonna talk about Nas in a minute because um, oh, Mike Heavy D and the Heavy D and the Boys got, got five albums. Okay." And he's got four solo. He got so. four solo. Okay, so even more than what we thought. So he got bar work. Yeah, but yeah, we're gonna talk about Nas in a second because Coop brought something to my attention. Rigger Forty Nine with the super chat says, "Against all odds was better than hit him up." Okay, we got some people that agree with you on that. So no, like Machiavelli the album, like like um bomb first, uh crazy to live and die in L A. Toss it up, uh white man's world, me and my girlfriend. Uh, mm -hmm. against all odds. Like, no, all of those songs are better than this record. You don't want me to go through all eyes on me or me against <laughs> the world. Literally, literally, all of the songs on me against the world. All of the songs we on got book an, one. We got an assignment for you, Coop. I'm going to need you to rank some Pac songs that I are will. better than Hit em Up. I'm going to give, how about this? How about if I do my <laughs> top 50 Tupac songs? Oh, that'd be great. Zuri with the super chat Top says, 50 Tupac songs. That's not a good reason to not like it. Hit him up. Hit, hit him up, up at is, 43. It said, Hit him up is a top 10 to 15 Pac records. Stop, Coop. Shit is whack. 36 Chambers with a uh, $20 super chat showing love. He says, Hit him up was impactful, Coop. I was 14 in uh, 2006, and my whole era still played that song a decade plus after the release. It's like that, and it has endured. Impact alone holds it up. Um, there's even, um, a, mm, even if it isn't better, y'all bugging. What okay, impact let me are you talking about? But what do you think about, why do you think that it has that level of impact? Listen to what I'm saying. This is what I mean about how childish and immature people are being. <laughs> you heard it because it was the B-side to a big single that sold a lot of records. You wouldn't even heard it that much had it just gotten released the way other disc records got released around the time independently on their own. It came on a piggyback of how do you want it. You don't think the streets was playing that, though, because... Mike, I heard it from my mom's friend, Kathy, who's a white woman who lived in Sandy Springs that loved How Do You Want It. When the B-side came on, I was like, what's this? She was like, oh, this is Hit em Up. I was mm. like, oh. So, yeah, that's how it happened. So when people are talking about the impact, it happened because How Do You Want It happened. So you're, you're saying the impact is based on how it was packaged. Correct. I think great the, marketing. I think the impact's based on who it was about. Like I said, great marketing. And I think that but being on the B side to how do you want it? Name another disc record that has that type of marketing and packaging to reach the masses like that. And this is when Pac is the biggest artist in the game. And all of these singles are going platinum and the album's going multi-platinum. I think 36 Chambers hears this in 2006 because of who it's about. I think he hears it in 2006 and, because of the marketing and the packaging. And their untimely demises, too. Like, let me ask you something. Do you think Drop a Gem is a better disc record? I do, yeah. Why don't you hear it? Be I don't know. Marketing. Thank you. Well, obviously, Pac's marketing is going to be different. But right. Yeah. Right. Uh, and, you know, that Interscope machine is insane. They got the mm. best. Right. And they got the best right. when machine you, in the game. When you work for the Corleone family, Mike, <laughs> get certain amenities. Get certain amenities when you work for the Corleone family. Don't I'm going to say something real that? controversial. I think that Jimmy Iovine is probably the greatest hip hop executive of all time. It's not even it's not even arguable. <laughs> like it's not even an argument. I mean, Pac, he you know, he signed Pac straight you up. You can go Pac and Dre and stop. Dre? You can stop right there, Mike. Snoop. You can stop. Eminem. 50. 50. You can stop. Game. You can stop. Kendrick. 
You can stop, Mike. <laughs> I think could have could have stopped that Pac and Dre. Yeah, I think he's the best hip hop executive. Don't of know all about, time. don't know don't know whether hip hop executive got a top three producer and a top three MC. LP with the super chat says on Impact, it's a um, one three song uh, as a song. It's not top five. Oh, he says oh, it's top three. So Impact is top three. Not what top did five. it impact? That's what I'm saying. Zuri with the super chat says, "Kids today recite hit 'em up." It's the memorability. If that's a word. It's a very memorable record. You're not you're not getting off of this. You think that hit 'em up's not top fifteen disc record? It's not even close. It's the only song that even got packaged to that. It's an unfair advantage. What makes a great disc record? It got then? packaged as a B side on "How Do You Want It." That is how it got delivered to the masses to deliver this impact. What part of that are people missing? All these other disc <laughs> records. Listen, all these other disc records had impact. Because they were great disc records, not because of how they were packaged. It was packaged well. Shout out to Interscope and the Corleone family. <laughs> I hope I don't wake up with a horse's head in my bed or some shit. <laughs> but the shit is whack. I'm sorry. Like, somebody just need to finally come you out and say You think Hit Em Up is whack? It's not a good record, Mike. It's a recycled hook. It, Mike, tell me. Call the cops. Let me see. Tell me. Out. Tell me this and be honest. Mm-hmm. Where does it rank in any of his bar work? I mean, where does it rank in any of his songwriting skills? Think about the things that make Tupac great and show me where that this is a reflection of his greatness. I think that was a good point. It's, it, I think it's the, it's the tone, though. Like, I think that's why. Oh, you like watching the nigga go crazy on another nigga. That's well, what's I ain't wrong saying. with niggas. <laughs> right. I'm not saying you. Yeah, yeah, I know. But I'm mean. saying fundamentally and hairily, people talking about the impact. It's like, oh, y'all love watch, listening to another black man tear another black man apart, and y'all going to continue to encourage. It had impact. We still say it. It's like, that don't mean you're supposed to, stupid ass nigga. Esquire with the Super Chat says, nuance is key here. Coop, cited a there social... There ain't no damn nuance to the song. <laughs> I don't know if he's still talking about oh, that. Oh, about the This is Esquire. He says, uh, Coop cited social commentary as the sole separating factor between Cube and Big, which is why I use Common and Snoop analogy. No wrong answer here, but I know cherry picking when I see it. I mean, first of all, Common was <laughs> an alcoholic on his first two albums, so stop making it seem like he was conscious all the time. All right. <laughs> Feel what I'm saying? No, no, no. Common talking like a nigga on his first two albums, Esquire. Yeah, he, Maybe you should go listen. A, he has a brew in his Right, right, right. Maybe you should listen to Can I Borrow a Dollar in Resurrection to understand this conscious, quote unquote, common you talk about don't really start popping up to about 97, but he's been around since 91. Didn't he have like a 40 in his hand or something? On the cover of the album. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> MC with a super chat says, Nail in the Coffin by Eminem, Mike D. No, no, you know what? Nail in the Coffin's cool. I'm more of a fan of the sauce. Dollars and Cents is better than Hit Em Up by DJ Quick. I think so, too. Yeah. There's, there's, there's literally tons of diss records. Now, about this? I can name 20 diss songs better than Hit Em Up, and I can name at least 40 Tupac songs better than Hit Em Up. Like, at least. It's not even that hard. The sauce starts off like, coming up, and never matter what color you was, if you could spit, then you could spit. That's it. That's what it was back when. Motherfuckers were straight backpacking, ciphering, fighting for life, and it's rapping. Yeah. And then killed the song. Shit, Piggy Bank better than Hit 'em Up, Mike. I never liked Piggy Bank. Me I don't neither. think I don't think Piggy Bank's better than it Hit 'em Up. I better. think uh Back Down is. Back down that's not even a question. <laughs> Esquire with the super chat says the body. Does Cube beat big in a versus objectively? Now I think he could. We talking about everything? I think he could. It would be hard. But this is what I mean. The content that Cube provides can be very Chuck D-ish in terms of how it makes the other person look. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. It's like this nigga ain't talking about shit. Like, what's the better song, "Good Day" or uh, "One More Chance" remix? I think it's the "One More Chance" remix, but I wouldn't mm -hmm. play those records next to each other. Yeah. Like I would probably play like "Bop Gun" or something like that next to "One More Chance." Cube has a much better chance against Big than Common has against Snoop in a versus if we want to go there. I mean, I love Common, but it's like when people acting like he's like this righteous brother, it's like. Rigger 49 with the Super Chat says, uh, you got to remember, Hit Him Up came after Pac got shot. Who shot you and all them other dudes side dissing. Like, yeah. hey, ain't this the guy that starts off like water for chocolate talking about he got his eyes on the thighs of Mary J. Blige, something like that? Mm -hmm. Ain't that how the album start off when like? The, it don't start off like that. That's like in the middle. Okay. Thinking about how the good how good the cat yeah, must, must be. be. Stop eating meat, but I still rap husky. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Really righteous, Mike. You get what <laughs> I'm saying? It's like, yeah, that's that's that pro black rhetoric. I mean, what pro black rhetoric does common really, really spit? 
I like think a song about for a sada, but yeah. that's what I mean. But like, no, no, no. Go look at his catalog. Mm-hmm. What pro black rhetoric is he really spitting though? He might have a beautiful, conscious, and awoken stream of thought in terms of how he delivers it, but he don't really make pro black rap songs. And niggas need to stop acting like he do. This is what I take from Common. I the, feel the like light's not a pro black song. That's a love song. Six cents. The I, corner is the corner pro black. No, nah, no, nah, that's kind of when he had to change course. What I think from Common. I think Common's whole approach is more of like a I have a dream type approach. Very much so. And that's why, and he actually made a song with Will I Am called I Have a Dream. The song's not Using good that either. speech and stuff. It's better than Hit Him Up, but that's not good enough. <laughs> but no, nah, it's not better than Hit Him Up. <laughs> but they're, both, they're both bad songs, so it really doesn't matter. But what I was going to say, man, it's like um, that, well, that was my gripe with Common's most recent effort because. I could take that whole I have a dream talk before you get a a level of notoriety and get in position where you're actually able to execute on some of these things you talk about. And kind of like what you were saying with the Kendrick thing, it's hard to hear Common speak from a position like he used to in the 90s when now we know you have access to the White House. We know you're out here campaigning with politicians, helping them get in. You have relationships with people who can actually change things now. But now the music is still, wouldn't it be great if this and this? Okay, Okay, listen. Nigga, make the change. This is what I mean. And Esquire, this is is for you, brother. Listen to this. This is what I mean. Guess what? You want to know what Common is? He's insightful, just like Jay is. It's just the rhetoric is different. So peep game. You might... So you talk about what you know and what you go through. It's just some people like to label things a certain way. So Common's first single on One Day It All Makes Sense is the joint with Lauren Hill where yep. they take the Stevie Wonder hook, uh, yeah. Retrospect, Retrospect for, for Life. life. Yep. He talks about him and the impending baby mother potentially getting an abortion, mm-hmm. saying $315 ain't worth your soul, $315 ain't worth it. But they're talking about what they would do if they have this child together. Mm-hmm. Now, him being insightful about potentially getting an abortion makes people think that he woke and conscious when the reality of the matter is that the niggas go through that shit every day, just like niggas is out here hustling every day. So why is it not okay for Jay to talk about the insightfulness of hustling and get labeled a certain way, but Common gets labeled righteous for talking about abortion? It's like you talking the way other niggas talk when they get caught up in this. You just happen to be a poet. That don't make you fucking righteous. I think that's a fair assessment. 30. Right. So when people be acting like common all woke and stuff, it's like, no, that's a song about abortion. That's a topic matter he chose to explore based on what he was going through. Jay chose to do friend or folk as niggas was pulling up on his blog. That's his life. That's 36 his life. Chambers with the Super Chat says, Hit em Up has 500 million streams on YouTube alone. Those modern numbers aren't influenced by being a B-side <laughs> on a single 25 years ago. How do you Yes, want- it is. It's the direct correlation of it, actually. <laughs> How do you want it doesn't even have those numbers now. Longevity counts. No, people, people, like, people like the beef more than they like the love, and that's really all that, that proves. That's why I say they like to see niggas fight more than they like to see niggas together. That's all that's about. It's like no different. And shame on people that try to encourage the record and make it seem like it's some sort of dope record. Because even it, when you sit it next to other classic diss records, it does not hold up. That's why I'm telling you the song is not good. Mm. You can't play it next to No Vaseline and tell me that it's good, Mike. Think about that. Go play No Vaseline and go play Hit Em Up and tell me that it's a top five diss record. Go play Ether and then play Hit Em Up and tell me it's a top five diss record. You'd be like, no, these are two different worlds. I mean, I told you, I think Checkmate. The Takeover. Jada go is listen better. to Mike, the Takeover. Yeah, the takeover is a much better record. Nigga, you ain't live it. You witnessed yeah. from your folks pad, scribbling, scribbling in your notepad, notepad and, and created your life. life. I showed you your first tech on tour with Large Professor. Then I heard that album about the tech on your dress. No, that's way better than Hit 'Em Up. It's very, very problematic. I, think, you know, I see where you're coming from. Like, you understand how there's levels to this, and Tupac's not hitting that diss level. I'm sorry. Jay Short with the Super Chat says, people talk about Nas beats, but uh, just had a revelation listening to Life After Death yesterday. Outside of the singles, what are the classic beats on Life After Death? Mm. I'll tell you what, man. I love the beat to The World Is Filled. I think that's that's a brilliant beat. There, you're nobody till somebody kills you. Mm. I love that beat, too. Uh-huh. I um, think uh, I got a story to tell. I got a story to tell. Mm-hmm. Ten Crack Commandments. Um. I love I love the I love the dough beat. The what's beef beat? I love the what's beef beat. Yeah, me too. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> yeah. 
check out. This I think that's song. actually one of the stronger points of Life After Death. I think it's production. one of the top five songs on Life After Death. That's what I mean. Like, how can you listen? To what I'm saying, like, think about what. Cool, we might need to get some of these super chats. This thing keeps jumping away from me because it's like I'll have them there and then it's gone. Yeah, let's see what the last ones we did. No, it's been jumping on me too. It's been jump. Yeah, this is YouTube messing with us, man. I might have to get. It said, uh, did you get Zuri's? Zuri's? Uh, I didn't. Okay, Zuri Fraser with the four ninety nine super chat said, "Y'all rate Dre Day high, and that song is mostly about people getting prison raped." <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, but it's better than Hit 'Em Up. It's a great Dre fucking Day's record. Better than think think up. about this. Now Dre Day is much think better about, than think Hit 'Em about Up. This. You're right. Dre Day starts off the chronic. Yeah. How can you put that in the same stratosphere with something that's on the B side to how do you want it? Do you feel what I'm no, saying? No, no, you're right about that. Dre Day's a much better record than We don't up. even talk about yeah. Dre Day as a top five disc record, though, so how is Hit Em Up, Mike? You're right. Niggas ain't be making sense. Like, like, because here's the problem. Admitting that you like Hit, hit Em Up is actually admitting that, like, you really, your taste ain't like that, too. That's what I'm trying to say is it's like, no, y'all niggas taste ain't like that if you think Hit Em Up is that dope. Because it's not. And you can't sit it next to other great disc records. Mike, go play Dre Day and then go play Hit Em Up. <laughs> You're right. This is a fucking joke, Mike. Casey, and you won't. never hear me talk about Pac or Pac's records like this. That record's not good. That's why I never liked it because y'all niggas notarize a bad record. <laughs> Need to get some better ears. Casey, one with the super chat says, y'all didn't mention Alchemist last episode. No producer has been doing it as long as him and as good. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Rick and Robert, the super chat says, um, what are y'all talking about? Pot got shot. That's where the anger came from. How uh, how would you feel? It was a war on the track, not a diss. It was war on the track, not a diss record. No, we, we've we even spoken about that on this show. It's not even about that. It's about the actual song. I just said Bomb First is better. I just said No More Pain is better. I'm not talking about the rhetoric. Is is he not talking about Big and Puff on No More Pain? Yeah. He literally let the... Dancers but it's not turn, as direct, though. He, Mike, he's saying dancers turn CEOs. How much more direct? Can- <laughs> Leroy Green with the Super Chat Who are we says, talking about, Mike? Who are we talking about on No More Pain? I don't know. Now my adversaries blast on sight. And fuck your boyfriend, bitch. I want some ass tonight. You Y'all know my Stilo. Alize and Chris Style. We show you her. Plus all you niggas is jealous. Pull your gun out and blast. I dare you niggas. Who are we talking about, Mike? Yeah. I love that record. That might be the best record on All Eyes on Me. So it's not about the content. It's about the execution. It's about the beat. It's about the hook. Jay Shore with the Super Chat says, Life After Death is top 10, but which one of those beats is a top 100 all time? Those are the same type of beats that Nas uses. People are biased towards Biggie. Hmm. I'll tell you what. Can I tell you something? Mm-hmm. I always thought Niggas Bleed was overrated as a beat. I never loved the beat mm. of Niggas Bleed Me like either. that. You know what? I'm about to get the laptop so I can get these missing Super Chats because I think this thing is acting crazy. But yeah. Uh, hold on one second. Holler at the people. Right, right, right. Did you get the rig? No, you got the rig. Jay Short with the 499 Super Chat. People talk about, oh, no, 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 you just said that. Okay, hold on. Okay, 36 Chambers again with the 499. I see 36 is on one today. Why are we stacking diss songs against standard tracks? The barometer for what makes them good is different. Of course, Pox catalog music is better. No, no, no. See, what I'm saying is a lot of these guys, mm-hmm. some of their best songs are their disc records. No, 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 no. No Vaseline is one of the best songs on Death Certificate. Ether's one of the best songs on Stillmatic. The Takeover's one of the best songs on The Blueprint. But that's your premise. Drop bro. a Gem yeah. on them is one of the best songs on Hell on Earth. Dre Day is one of the best songs on, on The Chronic. But this is what I'm saying. Even if you just drop it arbitrarily, if it's that great, it'll fly. Like Back to Back or The Bitch in You. You feel me? It don't even have to be connected to an album for it to fly. I do think Back to Back is actually a more impressive record. Because it is. Let's do a little segment real quick and just go through these Super Chats since I got them right here. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and pull up the Supers. Let's see, because I don't, I want to put some respect on people's money, man. I don't want to miss that. Uh, okay, I think this is where we at. All right, so we got Hit em Up had a, a music video and was originally banned on radio. It's being a B-side is irrelevant. It was hot outside. Come on. How can you say that? Like, how about this? I remember seeing it on American Rap Makers here in Atlanta. Why, why didn't he just, hold on. If the record that strong and this is Pac and Pac in his peak, why didn't they just drop it by itself? It was in between albums? No. How do you want it? This is the B-side to how do you want it? This is all eyes on me. 
And people forget he didn't live too much longer after this record. No. I mean. And it's not how I want to remember him, and neither should anybody else. And they need to stop acting like this is something that she should be remembered and notarized for, too. This ain't how I want to remember Tupac. That's what I'm saying. Like, shame on you people trying to, like, take up for the record. There's nothing inherently good about the record, fundamentally, musically, or the projection of it. It's all bad. I think the night that I saw the video for the first time on American Rap Makers, Arnold Starr, you know, if you're from Atlanta, you know who that is. He uh he was announcing the uh or reporting rather while he was playing the video that Pocket gotten shot. So I feel like it came out around that same time. That's what I'm saying. No, 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 yeah. Mike. He didn't live too much longer after this. And, and that's part listen, and that's part of why it took off too. He didn't live much longer after yeah. this. And there was listen to what I'm trying to say. And shortly after he died, there's this single that has this song as the B side to it that is still available for sales in stores. Yeah. That also, so not only is the album hot, the record hot, but now he's dead. This is official collector's item material. Because how many disc records are on the B side to a smash single like How Do You Want It? Collector's item stuff too, Mike. Mm. People not using their fucking head. Shame on y'all. <laughs> Andrew Williams with the Super Chat says, most people that think Hit Em Up is a top pop song are probably ignorant. Just being real. Uh, Zuri with the Super Chat says, uh, y'all rate Dre Day high. And the song is mostly about people getting prison raped. We, we saw that one. Andrew Williams with the Super Chat says, Nas is the GOAT. Just wanted to say that. Uh, Jermaine Johnson with the Super Chat says, Unfortunately, Heavy D, uh, Kid and Play, Fresh Prince, Chub Rock, Rob Bass, etc. are all groups as, grouped as funny, is fun, corny rap. Street records were most marketable or more marketable. Um, Rigger 49 says, I don't oh like, shit, I forgot no gasoline, I'm no Vaseline, got that too. I don't, I don't think that it's the marketability part about it. I think it's lyricists were encouraged around that time. Okay. So if you, if you, like, how about this? The difference between Heaven and Kane in terms of how people viewed them was Kane's mic skills. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like plain and simple because very much had, had similar motion. You know what I'm saying? I think the Mount Vernon thing too. Because I think if, if Hev's from Harlem or something, it's different. I mean, I feel you. That's like um, it's harder for somebody, quote, unquote, who's like from Marietta or Gwinnett to make it than somebody who's like from one of the zones in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, what makes one of the – Migos have struggled with that down here. They're not technically from one of the zones. Yeah, you know but they I'm always saying? represented that. You know, they right. really are like the equivalent of where Migos are from. It's kind of like Mount, Mount Vernon, Vernon in New York. Yeah, up it top. is. 85 North. Yeah. Yeah, Rick 49 with the Super Chat says, uh, Cube washed big in a versus. He said Cube washes big in a Not versus. Not washes. Yeah. No. I mean, it would ain't, be a ain't no, ain't, no, ain't, ain't no washing big in the versus. Yeah. Jay Short with the Super Chat says, people talk about Nas beats, but just had a revelation. Okay, we got that one. 36 Chambers with the Super Chat says, why are we uh, stacking diss songs against standard tracks? The barometer for what makes them good or different. Of course, Pac's catalog of music is better. Uh, KC1 with the Super Chat says, uh, y'all didn't mention Alchemist. We got to that one. Rigger 49 says, uh, what are y'all talking about? Pac got shot. We got to that one. Leroy Green says, uh, Mike, look at the writing credits for Jail by Kanye. Uh, you see our friend there? That's who has the best diss track. Talking about Push? I don't know who he's referring to. Oh, yeah, Infrared's better than, than Hit Him Up. You think infrared's better than hit him up? There ain't no thinking about it. <laughs> Jay Short with the Super Chat says, uh, yeah, the life after death comment. Jermaine Johnson with the Super Chat says, common feels like spoken word with a mixed bag of content. Look like here, more man. than rap. Perhaps it's his tone and delivery that gives many of us that feeling. See, this is what I mean. On the same album, on One Day It All Makes Sense, mm -hmm. he got stolen moments, part one, two, and three, with uh, I think it's True Boy, um, Black Thought, and Q-Tip. Mm -hmm. And he's talking about his house getting broken into. That don't, I mean, that don't that don't that don't make him conscious. That mean that nigga live in Chicago and got his shit broke into, Mike. That's hood talk. Well, he did do the big payback too with um, you know what I'm saying, like water for chocolate. We was talking about they took his grandma's pendant. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That ain't being woke, Mike. That's hood shit that happens <laughs> in Chicago. You from Chicago. Niggas yeah. out here robbing and killing. Zuri yeah. with the super chat says hit him up was June. Pac died in September. He performed it live and people in the crowd loved it. Um, they loved everything Pac performed. That ain't saying nothing. Mike, <laughs> imagine going to see somebody. You'd be like, no, I don't like that. That ain't what you do at a show. <laughs> OG Winston with the Super Chat says, real motherfucking G's is a top 10 diss record. Real motherfucking G's is better. Yes. You think that's better? We've, 
Mike, we have named so many diss records better than this diss record. I'm sorry. It, it's I love Pac, but this I think ain't I'm it. Caught up. I think I'm caught up. And if I have an issue again, then I'll, you know, get back to this. Uh, let's see. I see another one. Rigor 49er. Cube got a better catalog. I'm about to do proper gym. I think we got everybody. Okay, so are you going to sit here and do a list better. of no, the Vaseline. records that are better? No, Vaseline. The hit up. Back to back is better. Niggas don't know what the fuck they talking about today. Back to back is 